For our Black Queer and Beyond episode, Mondo Black caught up with award-winning poet, performer, activist, and educator, Pamela Sneed. Rapunzel was a sister. You think I'm playing? I said Rapunzel was a black woman better than your mama. For June Jordan, and this is from my book, Kong. Easy, as one who never looks up to stress the importance of what they're saying, easy as that overused terminology a summer's day she said this country needs a revolution so you asked me something like i guess over the telephone about like identifying with uh gays and lesbians and all of that and in the name of the series being black queer and beyond i just wrote a piece called mother tongue and it talked about uh, where basically I sort of like have rewritten the Martin Luther King speech and it includes the story of women and gays and lesbians and all those people who've been excluded and the feminists, you know. And part of like uh, what this piece is about, I have a dream, was that I came into, you know, the gay and lesbian community. One, yeah, I think you're born gay or lesbian, but I also think that you make choices, that you make political choices. And that part of like me coming out and accepting, you know, being gay or lesbian was I wanted an alternative. I thought I was becoming part of like a revolutionary community. You know what I mean? I thought I was becoming part of something that, you know, people wanted to do things differently, you know? I mean, I think that like we, we need to like look at self-hatred. I think that that um, basically, you know, I mean, in something that I wrote recently, where it's like, you know, gays and lesbians, like, you always get them to, like, yell about bullying. But really, I think on the interpersonal level, like, we're the biggest bullies. That it, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, how do you hear about, like, some of the wars that go on with, like, you know, lesbians or with gay men or whatever. And I also think that we get, like, the wrong messages about what a revolution is, you know? I was talking earlier about, um, basically having like this really great epiphany. I mean, having been like a long time activist and all of that and having gone to South Africa and I think I was standing in either the Apartheid Museum or the Hector Peterson Museum in Soweto and basically Hector Peterson was like the first victim of the Soweto uprising and, um, and he was a 13 uh, year old boy who was shot and basically there's this really powerful photo that like shows him like you know this 13 year old kid you know his his uh, body draped over the arms of his friend like, you're looking at like the ANC you're looking at you know Mandela you're looking at all of these you know this this incredible footage you know but the most powerful thing is, is that the reason why people are fighting um, is basically so that like someone black kid can like wake up in the morning and like and, and feel good about themselves. I can't believe that it took like all these years of activism, you know, going, you know, halfway across the world where I had this kind of like reminder or maybe it was like like the really the first recognition that this wasn't about like, you know, changing the world, this wasn't about changing other people, that this was about changing myself, this was about how I looked at myself in the mirror, how I felt about myself. And so sort of like bringing the, the revolution, you know, home on a real level, like you can't have like a society that's, you know, completely in this transformation but is, is completely detached from itself. One I consider like teaching to be spiritual work. Um, I consider it to be activist work. You know, I work in the classroom. I work with people. I work with changing people's minds. You know, I work with changing their, their, you know, their hearts, their way of thinking. I think of myself as like Xena, like um, in the, in the, uh, what is it? You know, she was in the television series and uh, she's the warrior princess, right? And like, it's her past. And, um, she's trying to make up for her past because she was like kind of bad in her past and I wasn't bad necessarily but I didn't have the consciousness I have now but so she goes around doing good deeds and trying to like change people and so in that regard like I feel like being uh, a teacher is part of like I don't know I feel like Xena trying to like make things better I'm really glad that it's black queer and beyond um, because basically we need to beyond to me suggest uh, a future right and um and i think we need to go beyond i think we need to go beyond like simple identity politics um i think we need to go beyond like a lot of things that are happening in this culture you know the capitalism that's kind of destroying like the fabric of who we are the competition the the sickness you know um, so beyond is like a really good word because I think we need to like begin to sort of like move beyond.
Next, we caught up with Daniel Alexander Jones and his alter ego, Joe Mama Jones. But hello, my name is uh, Daniel Alexander Jones, and I am a live artist living in New York City. I am a writer, I am a performer, I direct, I sometimes design. So we're in this episode, Black, Queer, and Beyond. Why Black, Queer, Beyond? Black and queer are both identities that have been hugely important to me in my own life journey. And they've been hugely important as spaces for two of the huge communities that I'm a part of. Beyond, because I think a lot of the language that we've used to help us move through the last few decades is language that doesn't necessarily always serve us now. As we have one foot firmly rooted in tradition and community, I think it's very important to look beyond, not away from, but beyond the space that we're in right now to emerging languages and emerging ways of being in the world. Jomama Jones is my alter ego, and I think of it as A-L-T-A-R. She's a presence that comes through me Ostensibly, she's a former R&B singer superstar from the 1980s who decided to leave America when the record industry got kind of cagey. I've had a lot of adventures with gender and gender expression. I'm a man, I'm a queer man, I'm a queer black man, but I also have within me these two energies, these two spirits, one that can flex very masculine sometimes, or as masculine as I get, ha, huh? and then the other that is very feminine but the feminine energy is always tied to me to the divine. It's like it's, it's very connected to something much larger than me. It's very important for that divine feminine energy to be on the earth in an amplified way. She's accompanied a kind of radical shift in my own art practice, in my own way of being in the world. I feel like she's talking to people about love, which is a taboo subject in a very cynical city. She's talking to people about the responsibility of being open to one another and responsible to one another as citizens. And she's talking about what it means to risk moving past the stories that we tell ourselves about our limitations. So what has surprised me about the way that audiences react to Joe Mama is that they go crazy for her. What I feel is that she excites something in people that's the same thing that got excited on Saturday morning when Soul Train would come on. It's a place of play, a place of delight. And I really believe, as an artist and as a citizen, that that place of joyful play is our power. And that when that gets taken away from us or we let it slip from our hands, we lose something vital about what it means to be a human being, the why of resistance or revolution. So it's been interesting uh, to think about being you know, an out gay artist, an out black artist, um, and these are things that have definitely shaped the way that I work. At the same time that I'm an artist who works in, I really believe, a spiritual way, and the ideas will come to me sometimes from places that have nothing to do with those identifiers. And ultimately, I always feel like I must surrender to the art and I have to surrender to the impulse um, while I never lose sight of the fact that I walk through the world as a person who's queer, as a person who loves black culture. Change, change, change if you want us to make it. He, he, he. And you want us to take it So, so, so Now you're trying to buy one Life, life, life Now, now you need to get one Hypnotize Now you're trying to keep us With your lies That you keep on repeating In your seat There's a nightmare inside you Mondo, 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 Black, 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 Black,